It is 4.15. I will call the meeting to order. Um, number two, roll call. Um, okay. Um, Alder uh, Decker? Here. Alder Ackley? Here. Alder Heideman and um, Alder Feldy are excused. And Alder Salazar are here. That's it. All right, if we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Dean Decker, Alder First Number District Six. Joel Kaczynski, Police Department. Betty Ackley, Alder First Number District Four. Chris Tomagowski, Police Chief. Paul McGovern, Civilian. <laughs> Scott Navy, Alder Lake Police. Melissa Fassbender, City Clerk's Office. Mike Stelter, Sheboygan Police. Eric Montiano, Fire Chief. Um, and then Amanda Salazar, Alder First Number District Three, and Chair. Um, Great, we will move into agenda item number five, uh, approval of minutes for the May 1st, um, 20, 2023 meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes from May 1st. Second. Great, we've got a motion and a second. Um, can everybody, what do I say? Okay, sure. any, discussion. any discussion? Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, motion passed. Chair votes, motion passed. Chair votes, aye. Chair votes, aye. Motion passed. Thank you, everybody. This is my first meeting. Bear with me. You're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> You're great. Right. Thanks for the positivity, my friend. <laughs> All right. Um, agenda item number six um, beverage operator license application number 3325, uh, hearing regarding denial of license. So that's this number six is regarding Adriana Yerk. She is not here yet. Given the time, we do have an officer here on the matter. Given the cut time, I'm going to suggest that we move to the other things, but then if she's not here by the time we get back around to it. Okay. Great. So I can just move to agenda item number seven. Yeah. Okay. All right. Agenda item number seven, um, taxi cab driver license application number 3744, hearing regarding denial of license. This one is regarding Paul McGovern. Mr. McGovern is here. Uh, and so just to provide you just a little bit of background, uh, staff, uh, Really, realistically, the clerk gets to decide uh, whether to deny a license or not. And staff uh, met and the clerk uh, denied the license. Uh, this is an application for a, a new license. Uh, she, in her denying it, she, uh, Mr. McGovern has a right to appeal that to you as a committee and you get to review the denial. Uh, and so uh, that's what is happening here today. Uh, and staff is going to present their reasons for recommending denial. Uh, Officer Stelter is going to kind of uh, take the lead on that, although on, on your behalf, I'll, I'll ask some, some questions and ask some questions of Mr. McGovern. Mr. McGovern will also have the opportunity to provide any uh, information uh, that he wishes to provide. Before we start, does the committee have any questions or concerns that you want to raise before I ask questions of uh, Officer Stelter of Mr. McGovern? At this moment, no. Okay, uh, so um, Lieutenant Stelter, if uh, um, we'll just start out, if you could just briefly uh, provide um, the basis for the reasoning for the denial of Mr. McGovern's uh, license. Uh, yeah, it's the um, night of uh, July 21st, 2022. Uh, Mr. McGovern was operating as a taxi cab driver for the taxi when uh, he came across some intoxicated, um, a little unruly customers um, that got into his cab and he didn't want to give them the service, so he kicked them out. Um, at one point, it, it is alleged that one of those customers uh, reached into his window and struck at him. And then in return, he chased down that customer and um, uh, punched him in the face, giving him a bloody lip. Ultimately, he was charged with disorderly conduct. Um, 
realistically, it could have been battery. He had a, the victim had a uh, puffy, bloody lip, but he was charged with city disorderly conduct. And in fact, uh, he has now been convicted of disorderly conduct. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, and uh, let me just ask you a couple of other questions. Um, you don't have any concern, do you, about simply his denying service to someone who was unruly? Is that fair to say? No, no concern for that at all. In fact, that would that that piece of it would be appropriate if he doesn't want to provide service to somebody who's being disorderly, that he, he has the right to do that. Correct. Um, your concern is, and in, in fact, even self-defense in the window, you wouldn't be too concerned about him trying to defend himself from someone trying to punch him. Is that fair to say? Correct. Your primary concern is the fact that he took it upon himself to chase this person down afterwards and, and uh, get violent with him. Is that fair to say? Yes. And so, and what about that just, uh, you know, leads to the concern about whether or not uh, Mr. McGovern would be an appropriate person to hold a uh, taxi cab driver's license? My concern would be that he was operating as a taxi cab driver um, the night this occurred. So he's operating with the city license as a cab driver and um, he assaults one of his customers when he should have called the police if he was that concerned and there was a disturbance as he was trying to remove them out of the cab. Uh, Mr. McGovern, um, I'll ask you a few questions and then we'll give the opportunity to have any questions if you decide. Um, Mr. McGovern, you've indicated that you wish to um, appeal uh, the denial uh, by the clerk of, of, of your license. What what is your basis for appealing the denial? You guys don't have notes on the court proceedings, do you? We, we know that what we have is just that you were convicted of disorderly conduct. Oh, that's all. Okay. Yeah. And um, I didn't pursue him. He pulled me out of the van, threw me to the ground, kicked me before I got up. That was the prosecution witness, um, what she said in court. But you were convicted of disorderly conduct. I know. You? I don't know why. That I mean, and the prosecution witness pretty much defended me, and it's just odd. Uh, I didn't pursue him. Uh, he he kept coming at me. So that's. Um, I'm not. I mean, this is the first time I've ever gotten in trouble in my life at the age of 56. You know, I've never been to jail. Uh, I got a DUI when I was in my 20s, but I got my CDL now, and not a good idea. Um, yeah, I'm not a violent person. The, Mr. McGovern, the, uh, the arrest was in July and uh, of this past year, correct? And the conviction was in March of yes. this year. Um, does the committee have any questions they want to ask of either party? Um, so how long have you been in taxi cab Uh, a year and a half before I got in cab license. I'm Ubering now, but it's not as lucrative. It, it is relevant that this is a new license that we're dealing with rather than a renewal, and that's because he did not renew most recently, the license that he had after this incident, and then he came and applied for a new license. So you, that's why we're doing the hearing this way, whereas if we were revoking a license, that would be with Joe here. But because uh, this is a new license, you get to treat it as he's had one. Can I add something too? Um, I did go to the police after I kicked him out, and Police officer said, uh, can't you see I'm busy? There's two officers there. And neither one of them helped me out. And that's when, after that is when I got into, uh, the guy came out and kicked my van, the cab. And it's not my, it's not my vehicle. If anything happens to the cab, it's my butt. So that's why I stopped. And then when I stopped, he punched me through the window. And then pretty much dragged me out and kicked me. I don't see how I, I was the one pursuing him. And that's all in court records. 
This that's, happened that's, that's all I want to say. <coughs> I have a question. This happened in Sheboygan? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, there is a there is a police report, uh, Lieutenant Stelter, that you're working off of. Is that correct? Correct. And that rewind where I went to the police, they were standing in front of the door at rewind. They had two cameras went right where we were at. So. I don't know if they keep those kind of things on record or not, but. Uh, Lieutenant Stelter, I think in the police report, there's some indication about the relative uh, suffered by the two parties. Would, would, would you believe that to be relevant to the circumstance? Yeah. Um, and I was, I got a lot of my information from viewing body camera footage which shows the other half of this with the bloody lip and and small um, but yeah in the police report it says that uh he suffered a bloody and swollen lip. and is there also an indication in there of uh what injuries uh mr mcgovern had if any um it does say no obvious signs of injuries I do. my knees messed up for good Well, he threw me to ground and hit my knee. Every time I wake up now, it's in pain. I can usually walk it off, though. So. Not appear any visible bruising or redness, but he's documented in his report. Oh. And in fact, the, there is uh, there is a description of what uh, Mr. McGovern told. Um, uh, the officer in this case, in the second to last paragraph on page three of the police report, uh, begins around 0400 hours. Is that correct? Yes. Would, would you just read that paragraph? It says uh, Officer Straczynski was able to locate the cab driver, Paul McGovern, and I then made contact with him, and he told me that he had someone. He had someone contact him for a ride via phone and later said they didn't need him and that he sucked. Paul told me he was driving by Michigan Avenue and 13th Street when two people had waved him over. Uh, they stated they had been at Ricky's bar and wanted a ride. They then said they were going where they were going. Uh, Paul noted the address and that uh, who had just declined service to. That's who they had just declined service to. Um, they were sitting in the taxi at this time, and Paul told them to get out. They got out, but were upset. He said, Jamal kicked the taxi. He said, do you know who I am? Question mark. Uh, I'm going to kill you. And then punched Paul in the face, specifically his left cheek, through the open driver door, or window, sorry. Paul said he then got out of the taxi and punched Jamal in the face. Paul did not appear to have any visible bruising or redness. And that's somewhat different than the facts that even Mr. McGovern is providing today. Is that correct? Correct. Any other questions from committee members? No, I guess I agree. If you have no other questions, then basically your determination now is to either uphold the determination of the clerk uh, or to overturn the determination of the clerk. Uh, if you uphold the determination of the clerk, he will not be issued a license. If you overturn the determination of the clerk, then she will issue him a license. I am very sorry for what I've done. And I've never done anything like this before ever. I'm going to ask another question. Okay. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'd like to have some feedback from the police department, how they feel about giving Mr. McGovern a license. I think that the reason for the denial says it all. Um, we feel that he was acting in service as a taxi cab driver under a city taxi license and he took things into his own hand and should have called the police. That would have been the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. 
we would deny it, but would, 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 would leave, 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 leave the possibility open for the future. Yeah. Right. You can always apply again in the future. I think uh, typically the staff committee looks at gaps in time between violations and, you know, always, always considers that. Obviously, um, you know, we can't sort of make promises. We've typically, as a committee, mm -hmm. uh, you, you've often said, you know, maybe come back in a year or two, but with no, no promise. Uh, I'm really surprised that uh, nobody looks at my prior record at all. Before. Um, for, can you tell me when the renewal was versus now applying for a new license? So, uh, taxi cab licenses expired December 31st of each year. Yeah. Okay. So his last license expired December 31 of, of, yeah, and I didn't realize it. 22. Okay. So then this, that's fine. Too. Okay. And then the d denial would continue through the, through the end of 24? Or no, no, you, you're just simply denying. You, you would be upholding the decision of the clerk not to issue him a license. He could come back. Frankly, he could come back if he wanted to pay for the application. He could come back every week if, if he wanted to mm -hmm. and have a hearing every two weeks here. Uh, obviously, that's probably not a wise thing to do. Um, but yeah, all all you're determining is whether to uphold the clerk's decision not to issue the license based on this particular application. What kind it's of timeline? Not like a, you can't come back for X amount of time. What kind of timeline were we looking at? Like five or six months or a year? So it so we can't ever promise that because we can't hold future committees to to those kind of decisions. They always have to make them based on the facts at hand at the time that you apply. But typically, the staff has said, come back in a year or two, um, and we'll take a look. Yeah, I've worked for them for a year and a half. Never missed one single day. Um, you know, I'm a hard worker. What, is, what else to say? I'm a good person. And we don't license, we can't, the state doesn't allow us to license Uber drivers. They're, they have they have their own separate yeah, rules. Yeah. So the, 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 the nice thing is I, I would compare the fact that he's gonna work for Uber or continue to work for Uber as sort of what you often think of when you deny liquor licenses but allow people to have beer licenses, something less to prove themselves. So that I think that is entirely relevant if he comes back in a year or two having driven Uber without any violations, that's probably, uh, that's, that's, I think the committee is probably going to consider that more than if he doesn't I think drive reason, at all. I think the reason why Uber is not as popular is because of past uh, things that would happen with Uber and they don't have background checks and I think people worry about that. I mean, it's not making what I was making when I was driving a cab. And Uber, you can go from here to Milwaukee and do Milwaukee runs. Here, as a cab driver, you're doing you're using local local people to do the runs. I guess I will make a motion to uh, recommend the denial as for the license as what the clerk, um, with the caveat that. He come back in a year, or you know, and uh, you know. But again, this committee may be a whole different committee. It might be all different people, so you can't. I can't say that. That's. But uh, I would Maybe consider. Yeah, I would consider. I would consider. Uh, um, you know, a clean record. You know, after. But that's. That's my uh, my motion. <clears throat> And technically, the motion would be to uphold the clerk's I'll, 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 Okay, yeah. motion is up. No, the motion is to uphold the clerk's decision. Um, well, like I said, that the, 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 the comments are extra. Yeah. <laughs> I'll second. Great. So do I have a motion second? All those in favor say uh, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye, motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to agenda item number eight, um, RO number 139, 
22-23 by the fire chief pursuant to section 50 yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes, thank you. 564 of the municipal code submitting a quarterly report showing the benchmark measurements of the police department for the period commencing January 1, 2023 and ending March 31st, 2023. Thank you, Chair. So uh, this quarter for the fire department, uh, our call volume uh, was a little less than this time last year, uh, fluctuates, which is normal. Uh, we were continuing to, as I mentioned in the previous uh, meetings, our, our quarterly reports, our inspection program is continuing to, uh, to increase. So we're over 900 uh, from uh, where we were last year. Uh, basically, it, we're, we did two things are the factor. We started earlier in the year, which we've never done in the past. So, uh, and then we've had, uh, unfortunately, due to injuries, two light duty individuals. But on the other hand, fortunately, because they were able to do a lot of the inspections. So our training hours are, are continuing to increase. They're significantly higher than last year. Uh, at this time, because we have uh, a lot more, uh, we're, we're tracking it more. Uh, we have a new program that's helping us do this. Uh, we're having a lot more uh, training ability uh, since the inspections also have been uh, taken away a little bit from the shift um, just because of our light duty. So it's, it's uh, done wonders for that. And uh, something that you'll notice in the report that's new, um, we haven't added or uh, really tracked our mutual aid uh, reports as well. Uh, so we really try to, to do that. So you'll see our mutual aid uh, received uh, was not accounted for at this time last year because we weren't able to track it like we were. So we're, our program's allowing us to do that. So we, we did the givens and such, but not necessarily the received. That means when help comes to us. Be glad to answer any questions if you have any, otherwise uh, pretty self-explanatory. Self so, um, so your ins your, ins <laughs> your inspections. Yeah. So what? what uh, do you expect like every business, or is there a certain criteria? Yeah. Like you know, if, if, it, if it's an open business that's open to the public, or any kind of factory or anything like that, you do all of it. So yeah, we have a little over twenty one hundred. Mm -hmm maybe more 2,100 businesses in the city. And yeah, so annually, every business. And then we also do the residential facilities that have um, three or more units. We'll go into the common areas. We, we don't inspect private areas. Okay. You mean uh, like but, apartment complexes? Yeah, anything with three or more units, we'll go in yeah. annually and inspect. Uh, like schools, we try to do twice. Hospitals, we try to do twice. Those okay. large uh, target hazard areas. but. We're limited with the staff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a lot to cover. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? You can actually, move anything? Yeah, so this one is actually an RO. So what you you would do is uh, ex recommend council accept and file. I make a motion to recommend the council accept and file. Second. Great. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone <laughs> opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Okay. Great. Okay. I'll get this, I promise. It. <laughs> this takes a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to go upstairs and come by and, like, can you vote on this? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. Agenda item number nine. Um, our own uh, number 138-2223 by the Chief of Police, uh, Christopher Dimkowski, pursuant of Section 54-65 of the Municipal Code, submitting a quarterly report showing the benchmark measurements for the police department for the period commencing January 1st, 2023, ending March 31st of 2023. Good afternoon. Hi. So you have to report in front of you. I, I would just point out a couple things before we start. We reformatted um, the report a little bit based upon the request from some older people. Um, and then the second thing is we've um, updated the data set that we're using to report um, the crime data. Um, so in the past, we reported what's known as summary data. Um, and what I would tell you is that um, the FBI um, updated their requirements and forced all law enforcement agencies to start reporting incident-based data. Um, and that had to be done by 2021. So we started doing that in 2018. 
but when we reported um, to the council and in our annual report, we continued to use summary data just so we would be comparing apples to apples rather than apples to oranges. Since it's been five years, we now have five years to use as a comparison. Okay. Um, and so we've switched to that data, and that's the data that we're that we're using. Um, really, the differences in, in the past summary data would would be just that it would be less data that we'd be looking at, and we would be reporting um, incidents in, in, in a summary is what I would say. Um, Incident-based reporting was created for researchers so that they have more rich data um, to do research off of. Um, and so it breaks down more categories in, in um, what we have to report. So before we would primarily report um, eight major categories for um, for um, crimes against people and four for crimes against person. Now what we're reporting looks like this. So a lot more data. And so what we're actually presenting in this report is still condensed down. Um, you can go online and get the rest if you want it, but we don't really want to overwhelm anybody. So this is what we're giving you. So the highlights of the report um, for this period, part one crime, there was a slight increase, 175 um, versus 170 for last year. Um, this is due to an increase in primarily aggravated assaults, 31 versus 21 last year. Um, and this would be the result of both um, domestics and increase in some of the incidents in the schools in that first quarter. Um, traffic accidents year to date are up slightly, 375 to 343. We had a big spike um, in January, but they've been trending down. So I think the numbers are going to turn out just fine by the end of the year. Um, there was a decrease in involuntary commitments for the year to date in comparison to last year, 33 versus 37, which again is good because again, they really spiked and we had some um, what I would call major incidents in, in January where all the partners weren't necessarily agreeing on how things were going to handle, but that seems to have smoothed out. So this past January. Yes. Okay. So that's all I got. So if you have any questions about it, happy to answer any of that. So uh, now have you have you started doing work with the um with like mental health experts in no, so we have a meeting. Um, it's either on the 17th or the 19th with the county about the co-responder okay. program. So they put out, um, you might have read in the paper at the beginning of the year, Vistacare was the primary vendor that they were working with and they had um, raised a bunch of their prices. And so that um, I went open door, they were threatening to close that because they had increased the price so much. And so the county put out a new RFP um, and they recently received all their bids. Um, and so we're going to meet to talk about how to move forward with that. Is Vistacare currently in place or there's nothing in place? No, nope, they're still using Vistacare. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, can I get a motion to accept and file? Accept and file. Second. Great. Um, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Great. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Got it. There we go. Right, agenda item number 10. Um, resolution number 323-24, a resolution authorizing acceptance of the 23 Wisconsin Bureau of Transportation Safety Bicycle and Pedestrian Enforcement Grant. All right. Your turn. <laughs> um, you guys have the resolution? Um, um, correct. It's yeah. attached to here. So, uh, so I've been doing the grant reporting for the grant that we've been that we've had for the last two years. It's been the same grant. We started with I believe five thousand dollars in twenty twenty one. We got uh, fifteen thousand last year, and the state's offering us basically twenty thousand this year. Um, you know, pedestrian and, and uh, bicycle safety is uh, a hot topic right now. Um, you know, we've been working not just uh, enforcing the laws, basically doing vehicle stops for, for violating laws that are aimed towards pedestrians and bicyclists, but also educating drivers as well. Um, as you know, we had we had two, I believe, either late 21 and, and then uh, in late 22, we had a traffic fatality. Uh, 
the first one was at the one in 21 was at 14th and Michigan where there was a lady crossing the street uh, when it was dark and dark and wet out. And then the one in 22 was the one that happened right after the holiday parade when one of the spectators was leaving. Um, and then obviously we had another one with a four year old just last month. Um, so we like to get the grant to continue that enforcement, our enforcement and education efforts in the community. Great. Any questions, Dean? Sure. Um, no, this isn't really part of the grant, maybe per se, but this is this is also in cook kind of including the the scooter enforcement somewhat a little bit because that's that that's kind of one thing that some of the scooter drivers are I mean, it's it's a great thing and people really like them and it's really i'm not anti-scooter but i have seen a lot of people not so safe with the scooters also <laughs> sure i mean it, it's something that we can definitely focus on uh you know we primarily use it to you know augment uh you know self-initiated patrols by officers for pedestrian and bicycle safety you know, we can certainly ask the officers to consider scooters there as well. Um, you know, some of the some of the patrols or a lot of the patrols we ask the the shift lieutenants like Mike to say or the area lieutenants to say what's going on in your in your areas. So like Mike's area, it's the farmers market, the Levitt Amp concert, and oh yeah, um, you know, we we use extra patrols along uh, Broughton Drive. Yeah, Broughton uh, a big one, yeah. Where the kids yeah. are hanging out and sometimes driving sure. uh, inappropriately in the mm -hmm. in the parking lots, and then obviously like the noise. Uh, violations and the speeding along Grove Park and <laughs> and uh, the uh, uh, the food trucks on Monday night as well over by Colorado oh, Park. Oh, so uh, scooters are involved in that too because they're they're prohibited in those areas downtown uh, on the sidewalks and stuff. So. I, I would just add to last week we met with um, Green Bicycle Co and company. I don't know Heather it's, Cleveland. Uh, yep, Heather Cleveland. Yeah. Some of, some of the other bike safety and awareness mm -hmm. stuff it's, to uh, work on ways that we can collaborate and, and work together to do both education and awareness. So yeah, what is it, Sheboygan Active Transportation? That's it. Yes. yes. Run it. There you go. <laughs> it was something like that. I think with the new e-bikes and stuff like that too, that's another you know layer to things. There'd be a lot more people, I think, who are driving bikes that didn't in the past. You know. Yeah, and I'll say I've seen a big increase in foot traffic with mm -hmm. the opening of blast, specifically talking about my district, right? The opening of blast and then walking down on the to the lake. It's like a perfect place, right? People park, but it you know, people are coming down that hill, they're not really seeing. It's just been uh I've seen a lot more yeah. people walking. I know normally on Broughton you do, but now just you know going up to so downtown. Really and, yeah. yeah. I think this is great. Okay. Full support of this. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I get a motion to, 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 to approve the resolution? To approve the resolution. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Great. Um, any discussion? Great. I know that part. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, all right, agenda item number 11, um, RO number 142-22-23 by city clerk submitting various license applications, change of premise application number 2805, uh, Blue Harbor Resort. So there's even been an update to the recommendations that I provided you just this afternoon. Okay. And as a result of that update, staff is simply recommending uh, granting uh, the change of premise application. So for, for approval of the change, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, it, it, it would be, and along with granting authority, but there's no longer the contingency of the changes to the change. Motion to uh, approve the change of premise, change of premise application. Second. And grant authority. And grant authority. So second. Okay. <laughs> Got a motion and second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Great. Agenda item number 12. Um, RO number 3-23-24 by city clerk submitting various license applications. So we're recommending the following and you can take them all as one if, if you'd like. Uh, so we're recommending holding the change of agent application of Justin Colby to replace Chrissy Kaiser as agent for Lush Lounge. 
pending his being called into a staff meeting to discuss various issues around his eligibility, granting both of the sidewalk cafe permit applications on the ARO, granting uh, the change of premise applications of Gotta Get You In LLC, two applications in Brew Hub LLC, uh, granting the change of premises applications of Legend Larry's LLC, which is 10 applications, but contingent on their obtaining a valid street festival permit, for the dates and location of their applications, and then holding the remainder of the application for the staff time to review the applications. Most of the application, this is the first round of the new oh, rules, and it. with both my staff and clerk staff were out much of last week, so we did not get finished uh, reviewing. The, the others are just uh, renewals. Correct? They're just renewals. So yeah, we got plenty of time. Okay, I will make a motion to grant and hold as per staff recommendations. Second. <laughs> motion and second. Um, any discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Now, oh, yes. Item number six. So Ms. Yerk is not here, uh, and because she is not here, you may choose simply to uphold the clerk based on her failure to do that. If you want to hear more, we can do that too, but uh, you do, she didn't bother to show up. So. Do you want to hear more? Great. I hope that's, that's chair's discretion. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Good to yeah. move forward. Yeah. There's a motion. Right. Okay. I, I'll make a motion to uphold the, clerk, hold the clerk's decision. Second. Being that she has not, did not appear. Great. Thank you, guys. Let me get your signature. Great. Right. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Great. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Okay, agenda item number 13. Next meeting date will be May 24th of 2023. And then item 14, motion to adjourn. Whoop, whoop, oh, whoop, oh, no, so it was, fast. Oh. I was smooth. So forward. we're talking about next meeting, and we do have a couple more hearings we're going to need to hold, and we're not sure we're going to be able to get them in for the May 20, what is today? The, yeah, for the May 24th which would normally mean then we have to hold them because they are non-renewal of new applications. We would have to get them in um, at the following meeting. However, the following meeting would normally be June 14. Um, and that's too late. And it's not that it's too late. It's that our we won't be able to, no one in our, in our, well, none of the attorneys in our office are able to be here to represent you because the 14th through the 16th are municipal attorney. Institute. So we are wondering whether you might consider uh, another date. Um, you could even do it as a special meeting just for those hearings. Could we move it up a week to the 7th? Certainly could. The 7th, the, the, the question would be, would you still have to, yeah, we would have the we would have all the ROs by then, so yeah. Or the or with the, the 31st. The, I don't think you'd early. It, if you do the 31st, you'd want to do it as a special meeting, oh. um, rather because that would be too early to do the regular meeting. But you okay. could do the 7th as the regular meeting in place of the 14th. When is school out for you already at that point? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Does the 7th work? The 7th of June. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make it. Yeah, I can make that work, and then I will. We'll just talk, reach out to Joe and Mark. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So it'll just be a regular meeting. It'll just be a regular meeting. Okay. And it actually will be two weeks after the previous meeting. It's just that normally you would have had three weeks in between that one. That one. Yeah, the next one. So we will still have one on the twenty fourth. Yes, okay. that one that one will still happen. It's just I, we don't think we're going to be able to get the meeting to meet all the requirements to have the hearing that quickly. We'll try, but okay. no guarantee. But we won't have one then on the 14th. Right. If you move right. it to the okay. 7th, you want to have the okay. 14th. And that probably works best. Okay. okay. But our next meeting date will stay on May 24th. Yes. Right. Okay. 
Then um, you're good to go. Great. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Great. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Your votes aye. Being adjourned. Thank you. At 455.